Reverend, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. Um, we believe that you know Mr. Rusase Bagina quite well. Uh, yes. Yes, that's true, and it's a pleasure to, to join you tonight. <laughs> All right, so tell us about uh, how you know um, Mr. Rosase Bagina. Uh, you know, he's a famous person, pretty much everybody from Rwanda, they know him. Uh, but for me, I met him uh, through just being a voice for Rwanda, because uh, he's been one of the freedom of fighter. Uh, and so he was a personal friend uh, that I talked to probably every month or so. Uh, it's somebody that I know really well. We have a work together, uh, just uh, speaking up for uh, Rwandans and fighting for the freedom of all Rwandans. All right, so uh, what do you believe has happened to him? Some are saying that he was disappeared uh, he was uh, forcibly uh, abducted and taken back to Rwanda. Uh, the government is saying that uh, he perhaps uh, trusted uh, somebody and was duped in coming back home. Yeah, so I do believe that he was abducted. I had the privilege to speak to him three days before he left to Dubai. He had told me about the trip. I did not know exactly where he was going, uh, but uh, uh, he's a somebody that I know. He will never, never go to Rwanda, even uh, at this time, because they were really trying to get him. He knew that's why he moved from Belgium to United States. He was somebody who will not even dare go to Africa. So I do believe he was taken against his own will. Um, why do you think the authorities uh, wanted him so badly? They say that he was funding rebels uh, in uh, Rwanda. Well, uh, it's, uh, that's not what I believe. I do believe, number one, it was prophesied in 2014 by a mighty man of God that Paul Rusesabagina was going to be uh, the next president uh, following Kagame. Uh, so I know the government of Rwanda uh, follows prophecies very well, and they always try to eliminate people that think can uh, uh, replace Kagame. Uh, they have been looking for him for many, many years, even, in fact, I talk about that in my new book, SOS, Rwanda, 30-Year Apocalypse. Uh, they had, there is a, a document that leaked out between Rwanda officials where they were trying to say, okay, what do we do? How, how can we kill this guy? How can we abducted him. So these are the things that he already knew. Uh, he's somebody who can be accepted as a peacemaker, as a somebody who can reconcile all Rwandans. So I do believe uh, they decided to abduct him so that he does not have a chance uh, to be a peacemaker, a peacemaker for all Rwandans. All right, so if, let's say, he didn't fund uh, rebels, could he have supported them and that uh, may be mistaken for funding them? It's very much possible. I know that he had a political party, MRCD, but I know him to be a peaceful man. He's not a man who is out there. Uh, to shed the blood, uh, but I do believe, like many other people, when um, there is no longer any political space for anybody else but Kagame, and when there is no other voice that can speak up without being shut down in Rwanda, the only choice that people have is to 
find a way they can get to Rwanda by any means. So uh, it's possible, but I also know that he did that for the good of Rwandans. It was not to harm. All right, you keep on saying uh, he's doing it for the good of Rwandans, uh, the freedom of all the Rwandans. Um, you know, for the outside looking into Rwanda, we see the president winning elections. We see the president uh, being recognized as doing many great things for his people. Is there another story that we're not seeing? Oh, there are many things that are happening inside Rwanda that don't get out because the first thing that Kagame has done is to shut down the voices of Rwandans. In Rwanda, you cannot say what is happening. I was just speaking to one of my colleagues there. When people talk to me, they have to go underground. But this is what he said. He said, Reverend Christine, our voices have been taken away. He said, uh, that our tongues are tied. So there are many things that are happening inside the Rwanda. For example, there is, there is a lot of killing going on of Christians, uh, pastors, and many people who dare to speak up. Uh, there is uh, um, a lot of killing going on behind the scene. I'm telling you what I know because there are people underground who talk to me inside the Rwanda. There is a poisoning going on inside the hospitals. There are many bad things going on. And what did they did to Rosessa Bagina, who is a very well respected humanitarian and businessman? You can imagine the common people inside, you can only imagine what they are going through. So there is a lot of secrets, a lot of bad things going on inside the Rwanda, but those things we never hear because the first thing that Kagame did was to kill independent journalism and independent reporting. Do you think that uh, Mr. Rusase Bagina will be able to prove his case in court when it uh, comes up for trial? Okay, so you see what they do when they capture somebody like that. We have seen this over and over again. They torture them so bad to the point where uh, when they ask you any question, you have to give the answer they give you. I will give you even another example. I do believe uh, right now, Paul Sesabagina is intimidated because when his wife got a chance to talk to him not too long ago, uh, she asked him, uh, I have sent you some medication. Please make sure that you take them. But he said, no, I don't need any medication. That's not him to say that. So in Rwanda, they put words in your mouth and you have to say what they give you because you are tortured. All right. Reverend, we're going to have to leave it there. But uh, thanks very much indeed for joining us and uh, sharing your thoughts with us this evening. It's a pleasure.